I want to pull up this story from the New York Post because I, I love this. Making women look dumb is a new disturbing podcast trend. And I'd of like course, to get, I'd like to get my medal course, here. <laughs> here's a here's a picture from the whatever podcast, and there's uh, Mary Morgan from oh. uh, Pop Culture Crisis. They're sitting with the crew, there's and then Destiny you've got uh, right? Destiny hanging out. Melina and uh, you know why I, I I take issue with this article because if the whatever podcast has Mary on the show and she is based and very smart. How are they making women look dumb when they have women on who also criticize other women and they criticize each other? Like, so, so who are they arguing is being made to look dumb? Are they arguing the women he brings on are making Mary look dumb, making uh, you, Pearl, look dumb? I would like to say I was very offended when I saw this because they didn't include my podcast in it. I don't know why my picture wasn't there, too. I just, but, yeah. but I actually, I think you're right though. I think it's stupid. Like women make themselves look stupid. I didn't do shit. Like, well, <laughs> I've, so I've, I've made fun of the whatever podcast. Like I did a cartoon about it. I understand why it exists. I do understand that. These oh wait, women was that your cartoon? And, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was me. Yes. Yes. That was me. Oh, that was so funny. Thank you. I'm, I'm really glad you enjoyed that. That was, uh, but I, I think that my my view of it, and maybe it's changed a little bit uh, recently, actually, is you have this podcast and these young women who kind of are, are very young and they just regurgitate whatever the culture tells them goes on this show. And then you have a guy who's in his 30s who obviously knows better because he's a guy in his 30s and he explains to them that they're wrong. And then it gets clipped and it goes viral. And it's like, look at this uh, dumb girl. One thing I was actually very, I'll say... Um, impressed by maybe something that made me feel a little optimistic was that when the roles were reversed and Lila Rose was on that show and her as like a good traditionalist woman, she was arguing with a man who was trying to justify sleeping around. Pretty much everyone in the comments was on her side. And every clip I saw of that video was people praising her. And so it does look like even though the targets are usually women, what people on this who are watching these podcasts are upset about uh, is the sexual revolution and its consequences. And they don't like when people kind of engage in these rationalizations for the type of behavior yeah yeah I think you know it, you know what it is funny thing uh i will point out though a trend on instagram is for women to make fake podcast clips have you noticed this no no <laughs> on instagram female influencers will buy these microphones and then they'll say something that <laughs> That's genius. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really it'll be a clip where they'll, they'll, it'll just be them talking to Owen and they'll say something like, I think that men should be good providers and too many women, you know, insert opinion. And that's the end of the clip and it's got a million views. Why do I even do my whole that's hour so, long podcast? So Why do we do this, Tim? Let's just make clips. Let's make fake shorts for YouTube. Oh, you know what's my crazy? gosh. I think that the older women are more delusional. That's how, my opinion. How so? Well, it's like... I just think they're dumber on my show. Hold on. When you say older women, do you mean older women or like older women who are single? Because that's also two separate categories, right? Mm, I mean, I'd say the majority of people that go on the shows are single. Mm. Can, can, so, but like, I, I thought you were going to say are dumb. But I just want to point well, this out. But I, I would just... Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Finish your point. Finish your point. I, would, I would just say that I think that the older women are more delusional on my show. Mm. And I think that's a lot of times like why men date younger because they're like thinking they'll be like better when they're older, but they're, they're just as delusional. So look at this. New York Post says, while OnlyFans model Nicolette Nicole admitted that her appearance on the podcast was to bolster her own following, she told Vice, the clips were definitely chosen to create controversy and make her look dumb oh. and shame her. No, no, no. The only thing I want to point out is calling somebody on OnlyFans a model. <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you know what makes me mad? Okay, because what the girls will do is they'll go on the show and then after they'll play victim. Like, oh, boo-hoo, mm. poor me. They've done this on my show so many times where like they'll come on and then they'll 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 sometimes say out straight out misandrist it, it, misandristic statements and then go back later and say, Oh, I'm a victim, blah, blah, blah. When it's like if you say dumb shit. Like there's so many women that go on these shows and don't go viral and don't say stupid right. shit and actually go viral for the right reasons. But if you go viral for saying something stupid, that's like your, that's your own fault. Well, that's the thing they say. Uh, so the the article that's being cited by the New York Post is Vice, and their subhead is the whatever podcast is bait. You can stop falling for it. N no, it isn't. They had Lila Rose and Mary Morgan on that show. Where are the clips making fun of them? They're not. In fact, the clips are praising them. The clip of Lila went viral because she was like telling a guy off and then people were like, wow, she's very smart. Well, even she like she wasn't telling him off. He was trying to tell her off and right. she was just very calmly like stating her position. 
And this the clip that went really viral agitated. was praising her. Yes. What's well, really happening? In the comments was praising. And it's funny because I saw one of these red pill channels post it to try to shame her. They're like, oh, this woman tries to tell this alpha what's what. But all of the comments on their channel were like, no, she's right. Like, yeah. this guy's completely wrong. What Vice is actually doing is saying, stop making us look dumb because we're dumb. Well, it's, they, 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 they're, no, no, no. They're saying stop making the sexual revolution look bad because if this was a bunch of left wing men talking down to women who were trad wives and saying you're an idiot who's missing out on what you should be doing in life, they would say this podcast is great. Yep. You think, yep. you think that it's women should be like, I think what happens a lot of people get offended is the thought that a woman is supposed to be raising kids. Your, you are, your job in life is to be a wife and a mother. And like, not everybody wants that. I mean, maybe you might, maybe people will argue that every woman deep down does want that. The majority of women do want that, I would say. I, I think uh, they surveyed childless women or like, and it was like 80% or something, 85% said they wanted kids. I can't remember the actual study. I think the issue is like they can't find the right guy to have kids with or the guy that they want. Mm -hmm. And like that, and usually when I like I talk to girls on the show, they'll say like, "Oh, I'm happy single, or I'm happy not having kids." And I like if I ask further questions and say like, "What about if you found like the guy that meets all your criteria?" And the majority of the time, they'll say yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember. Uh, I just want to mention this. I was at a, a bar with my my uncle and my cousin were visiting, and so we were all at the bar. And her and I were the same age, so we must have been like 22, 23 at the time. And we're talking to this bartender who's probably in her 40s. And my cousin says, you know, I'm like never going to have kids. And the bartender's like, how old are you? She's like, I'm 22. <laughs> and the bartender goes, shut up. Stop. He's like, shut up. You're 22. You have no idea what you want. No, 22-year-olds uh, should. And they, That's I the agree problem. that they should, but in this culture, they don't. And if someone is telling you, like, I know I don't want to have kids, here's the thing. If they're not saying, I will sacrifice having a family and sacrifice having children because there is a broader, noble goal, which I wish to achieve, then, okay, I think that's a person who probably does know what they want and can take you can take seriously. But if they're saying, I know... In my early 20s, I don't want to have kids and it's for selfish reasons. Okay, this is just someone who's immature. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. not like a well thought out life plan. That's I want to do things that make me feel good instead of thinking about what I can contribute. I learned pretty early on that to not use terms, say I'll never do something or I'll always do something. Mm -hmm. It's just, it always fails. No, it's just not very effective. Going remember, there, that video, go uh, remember that video of the, of the kids in like the 50s, they're being asked about war or whatever and they sound like adults. I know. Like, because well, it used to be to war, right? right it used to be that kids were surrounded by adults and learned very quickly how to socially interact what was and what wasn't now kids do nothing for five years we put them in front of ipads or computer screens and they watch elsa and other nonsense then they go to kindergarten where they dance around with pride flags then they get institutionalized and learn garbage nonsense for like they don't learn real world things then finally by the time they're 22 they get out of college having been institutionalized their whole lives and they don't know how to operate in the real world yeah it's because it's not a biological problem i mean it might be an endocrine system problem but i'm looking Culture. at i look online and i'm like okay there are so many hot girls there are so many hot girls online i watch whatever i watch all these and i'm like these are beautiful young women prime candidates for motherhood like and where why are they not having kids what is going on you know what the number one like indicator i forgot what what the status but it's basically like the birth rate goes down when women go to college so like women start having like less children when they started going to college and yeah. it's and and they also when mate selection was more in the woman's hands basically what happened when it became more in the woman's hands the yeah birth, because the because like in the 20s that was when women started to get their own apartment so like before they would go straight from the dad to the husband and like then women like started to go get like the roaring 20s, right? They, they started getting their own apartment and like they then had more control of their mate selection. And like when women have more control of their mate selection, they go for a smaller and smaller percentage of guys where it's like, you know, I mean, why would they keep the bad boy away when they say like, get that guy away from my daughter? Because they, they like the dad knew he's not going to stick around. But women, it's like we're just so stupid when it comes to mate selection. Just because you work, not you personally, but work with emotions instead of. Yeah. Instead of logic. Yeah. Um, so and, and it's also like, I don't think we have a good grasp of like our league. Like I think women often sleep out of their league. Well, that, that that's, <laughs> that's the factually true though. Yeah. So the, like all of the uh, scientific research and, and uh, mm -hmm. dating data yeah. show that women always go for the most attractive men, but right. they tend to be able to because men have a wider range of willingness of a tr like women have a very tight range of their willingness to sleep and men have a very wide range. Right. So what happens is 
it's something like what, like the bottom 60% of guys are just like left out of it. Mm -hmm. And then it's mostly the top 20% of guys who are sleeping with all of the women. Yeah, well, and, and the other thing they, they'll always say, oh, well, dating apps aren't real life, but that's the number one way people are meeting under 30. Hmm. True. Yeah. Dude, so, those things are depression. Have you ever used those things? The dating, dating apps? apps? No, not really. Man, I started <laughs> to do it for market research because I was building minds in the social app. We were like, let's uh, maybe do a Tinder thing. And then I got addicted to it. I met a girl on it and it was like, just, I'm like, Look, why I'm judging these people by the way they look. It's the most mm -hmm. superficial crap. And yeah. I felt sick, depressed afterwards. Well, I mean, it's honest. I think most guys, it starts with looks. You don't kind think? Of, but it's like the sound of their voice and the way they smell well, is a big dude's part of Dudes just go on and swipe right on every single woman. <laughs> because there's like, the, the, I, was, I was reading uh, uh, data on how men and women use these apps differently. Mm -hmm. Women go on dating apps and then swipe right on guys they find attractive and then get messages from every single guy. Mm -hmm. And then guys go on there and swipe on every single girl mm -hmm. hoping one of them matches with them. Right, well think about it. Like women swipe right 5% of the time. Mm -hmm. Guys, just like there's a video where guys 60. going like, wow, 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 yeah, just like, like swiping like, everything. It's like between 40 and 60%. Depends on the time on the of day. App. If it's after 1 a.m., it's probably gonna be like <laughs> 70 or 80% because I'm in a desperate mode. I'm not yeah. anymore, but at the time I was, that was, uh, yeah. you know. But, but it's interesting because mind. women like pick non-monogamy in our 20s and then pick monogamy in our 30s when you think about it but that but that's obvious you know why like it's getting harder for the woman as she gets older so now she's like i yeah. need i need a guy who's not going to go anywhere right? yeah and that but that, but again like so when you have a culture like ours where the the sexual revolution has just completely destroyed the relationship between both sexes that seems to be what tends to happen but like in most traditional cultures that's not the case right like people settle down early they get married women are known for straying mm -hmm. less often than than men do and so this is part of what i was emphasizing earlier this is why and i believe fulton sheen even said this like uh, a society's value can be measured by the value of its women because mm -hmm. the men are always going to want to sleep around the question is uh, are women going to be the gatekeeper and say well like no we're, we're not having sex unless we're married unless you can provide a stable uh, home and, and family for myself and for our children and you're actually going to stick around mm -hmm. I guess there's a diminishing return to raising psychopaths like if you'd have a lot of kids that were all horrible humans mm -hmm. that would be worse than having very few kids that were phenomenal humans but then there comes a point where it's like population risk you might lose the human population if you don't have enough kids so it's better to just churn them out but like I think that in order to like, is it better or worse in other societies where they didn't have a sexual revolution? The thing is we have- It's coming. Well, no society it's has coming. survived a sexual revolution. I, don't, I think it's coming everywhere. I think like with social media, like I, I, and I get messages from guys all over the world saying, okay, like feminism is coming and you have places that were typically like more traditional, like India has a 1% divorce rate. And I get messages all the time, like saying that under 30, and I don't know the exact stat, but under 30, like the divorce rate is rising because mm. Western ideas are going everywhere. In my opinion, most places I think, like I think it's going. I I don't want it to get bad. Like I don't want it to get worse. But if I had to predict it, I think like you will see women getting more modern. Have you well, seen? You have know, you seen the psychological operations the military's been doing? No. They get like a twenty-year-old like e-girl, and then they have her make an account where she's talking about how great it is to be in the army or the navy or whatever. To get Sims to join. Oh man! <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness! Yep. Well, psychological but this is operations. With what Pearl's saying about how in countries that were more traditional, you see an increase in these abnormal lifestyle choices. This is the one form of colonization and imperialism that the left is very, very comfortable with. If we went into these countries and we destroyed their temples or took their gold, the left would be very upset, and rightfully so. But instead, what we're doing is exporting ideas that literally destroy these people's families, and it's praised, it's celebrated. But I wonder if you were able to pull, because now we're in the age of, of revealment, you know, the revelation, we're in, we're in the, the apocalypse, essentially. We're seeing the thoughts of people now that we didn't used to see, so yeah, we're seeing the misery of the unmarried, but... If we had seen into the minds of people in 1938, would they be miser just as miserable or more because they were getting beat by their husbands? Like Sean Connery's like, but this is, I reject no, this no, analysis think, that men were all just beating yeah. their wives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, that's a wave of propaganda that they did in like the 40s. I can't, I can't remember when they did it. There's this girl who like breaks it down really well. Her name's Rachel Wilson. She wrote the book Occult Feminism. But the propaganda, like it's mainly propaganda, this idea that like men were beating their wives left and right. Like they, it's a wave of propaganda that was like between the 40s and the 60s, I think. Oh, and so like you, you have men. Prop. Yeah. Well, you obviously have always had men who were bad people. There have been horrible human beings throughout all of history. Thanks for watching this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m.
and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.